All right, y'all. We got uh, we got SCP two eight five two cousin Johnny, one of the most bizarre SCPs ever. I I'm surprised that nobody had hadn't animated it sooner. To be honest, you know what I mean. But we have infographics here with it, so we're gonna check it out. This is one of the most disturbing SCPs of all time. Um, yeah, bro. Let's let's uh, let's get it, bro. Let's get it. It's a perfect day for a wedding. On a warm spring afternoon, a bride and a handsome groom are exchanging the special rings they had custom designed and made for each other. As they take turns placing the rings on each other's fingers, a man standing at the end of the wedding party steps out of position. He approaches the groomsman next to him and reaches into his jacket, taking out a pair of pliers that he hands to the groomsman. The groomsman happily takes the tool and then, without any hesitation, shoves the pliers into his mouth and begins removing his teeth one by one. When he is finished, he hands the bloody teeth to the man along with the pliers. The man then goes to the next groomsman, who repeats the same process. He continues going down the line until all of the groomsmen and bridesmaids have removed- Oh my gosh, man! This is gonna be interesting, bro. I'm- Yo, I'm, I'm excited to see what, like, infographics explains things, bro. Like, I need, like, like, well, like, Dr. Bob, if he does this, bro, it's gonna be really gruesome and really crazy. Like, it's really gonna show, like, the animation, the blood and everything. You know what I mean? But what I really like about what I really like about explain is they really gonna explain this to me, like really, like thoroughly. Their teeth, seemingly without pain or resistance. The man then approaches the bride and groom. He hands each of them half of the pile of teeth, which they gladly accept. They then begin to eat the teeth. With oh the my teeth, God! Really not bothered by the intense damage they're causing to their own teeth and jaws by doing so. The man watches as the groom moves the priest who is officiating the wedding aside. As the entire church looks on in joy, the groom opens his mouth and the deafening sound of cicadas are heard. This is only the beginning of what the SCP Foundation has labeled an SCP-2852 event. A terrifying and little understood phenomenon that is better known by the nickname of the anomalous creature responsible for them, Cousin Johnny. The Foundation had been trying to contain Cousin Johnny for decades, not that it ever done them any good. Johnny is a Keter class anomaly that's thus far proven impossible to contain. This is an entity so dangerous and volatile that three different mobile task forces are devoted to detecting and disrupting its activities. MTF Upsilon 36, aka the Party Crashers, MTF Upsilon 52, aka Cater Duty, and MTF Upsilon 99, aka the Altar Boys. But so far, all the Foundation has been able to really do is swoop in afterwards and do their best to pick up the pieces of people's shattered lives. Cousin Johnny has so far been observed to only operate in the North American subcontinent, and only seems to appear at Anglican or Catholic baptisms, weddings, and funerals. However, Foundation operatives charged with keeping a lid on Cousin Johnny harbor the hidden fear that he may one day expand his hunting grounds and wreak terror worldwide. If Johnny becomes became multinational or multi-denominational, his violence, insanity, and pure evil may truly become impossible to minimize. So compatible communities are constantly monitored for increased levels of juvenile delinquency, sterility, domestic violence, and divorce. After all this, you're probably wondering, who or what actually is Cousin Johnny, and how does he cause so much horrific tragedy? At face value, nothing about the appearance of Cousin Johnny would suggest an anomalous nature, or even any sort of danger. He appears to be a middle-aged white male, often with scruffy hair and a beard. On a cellular level too, Cousin Johnny appears all too human, but when you look at his physiology, it's a whole different story. Cousin Johnny has no identifiable organs whatsoever. His body is made out of a fibrous muscular tissue. The only exceptions are his teeth and hair which are made out of a kind of chitin, a key component of insect exoskeletons, such as those possessed by cicadas. Johnny's eyes are the first clue that something is off about him. From a distance, they appear perfectly normal, but up close, they're glassy and dead. This is because his eyes aren't actually attached to any nerves inside his head. With no nervous system or vocal cords, Johnny's ability to see, move, and talk defy any kind of logical explanation. His speech will seem completely normal to the people under his spell, but to anyone else, it comes out as complete nonsense. Often described as word salad, 
If people in attendance are briefed in advance about this phenomenon, whatever hypnotic ability causes them to hear his sounds as intelligible words won't work, and they'll be aware of how nonsensical it all sounds. But of course, that doesn't mean they're safe. Cousin Johnny appears at family gatherings and religious rituals, and immediately he'll be treated as though he's always been there. You know your Cousin Johnny, right? You go way back. Or at least, you're pretty sure you do. Nothing will appear unnatural about his sudden presence. In fact, if you're one of the victims of one of his incidents, chances are you'll actually find yourself taking a shine to Cousin Johnny. Sure, his sense of humor is a little crude and raunchy, but you can't help but enjoy his company. He's a fun guy to be around. And after all, he's family. As previously mentioned, he'll only appear at three different kinds of events baptisms, weddings, and funerals, and only those that are affiliated with either the Catholic or Anglican religions. The SCP Foundation has classified baptisms that Cousin Johnny attends as blue-level events, weddings are known as white-level events, and funerals are black-level events, with each one escalating in severity, violence, and horror. First, baptisms, the blue-level events. In these events, Cousin Johnny will appear and begin to act as a third godparent, despite there traditionally only being two. As the infant is lowered into the holy water, the entirety of their top layer of skin will come off like a molten snow. Oh my by looking her oh my horrific, this apparently causes no harm to the child. The godparents will then eat this discarded skin as though it's the most normal thing in the oh world. Oh my After god, this, the what is will leave that? The together, oh my god, yo, yo, no, no, y'all bugging, y'all are bugging. Yo, they're bugging off of that. Y'all are bugging. Y'all are big bugging off of that. No, no. Johnny will leave with them. He won't appear at any subsequent celebrations of the child's baptism. Of course, this is just the beginning of the terror. Following Cousin Johnny's appearance at the baptism, the child's risk of dying in the next six months skyrockets. And if they survive, they're at an increased risk of becoming unstable and violent later on in life. Their parents and godparents will both become unable to conceive any further yeah, children know, honey, and are likely to be yeah. found dead. Donna with another gifted sub. I just told you, relax, my boy. Thank you, bro. Seriously. Thank you so much, bro. Damn, relax, bro. Just tell, yo. Dead from drowning within five years of the event. Those who are only tangentially involved in the baptism ritual have a massively increased chance of failed pregnancies, or if they do conceive, they may become a danger to their offspring. Children who live through blue level events and survive past adolescence will experience adverse side effects when encountering the songs of cicadas well into adulthood, from experiencing physical sickness to going through dangerous psychotic episodes. I can't chill. I appreciate that, my boy. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm glad that you that you're able to feel comfortable in just supporting me and giving me, you know, all these subs and showing the love to the community, bro. Appreciate it, bro. Thank you. Seriously. Seriously. Weddings or white level events are more complex and severe. In this case, Cousin Johnny will insert himself into the wedding as a groomsman, and the most horrifying events will begin to take place after the vows have been exchanged. Johnny will provide various implements that allow the bridesmaids and groomsmen to remove their teeth, which are then given to the bride and groom to eat, which they do, causing severe damage to their own teeth in the process. The groom will then vocalize an unknown cicada call at an incredible volume, as loud as 140 decibels in some instances. That's a lie. The bride oh and my everyone God. else near the altar completely deaf. At the wedding reception, where everyone is continuing to behave as if nothing out of the ordinary is happening, Cousin Johnny will ruin things farther by giving the best man speech. The speech is more of his typical complete nonsense, though if you're there you'll never realize this and think that this is the best speech you've ever heard with some in the audience laughing hysterically while others cry uncontrollably. Once his speech is done, he'll present a gift to the newly married couple. 3.5 kilograms of human hair in various colors, 13 deceased specimens of a certain cicada known as Linnae's cicada, and 23 human teeth in a cardboard box. DNA tests on all the gifts have been inconclusive as to their origin. Much like many celebrity marriages, unions that occurred during white-level events never last 
and all end up divorced within two years, often as a result of domestic violence, and any children born during their brief marriage will be violent and unstable. But it's not just the wedding party that gets to experience the fun of a visit from Cousin Johnny. All married individuals who attended the wedding will find that they are unable to conceive children, despite no biological indicators of infertility. Any children present at the White Level event will show no interest in romance throughout their life, and often hey, die tragically hey, before reaching the you, you know what's crazy? You know what's crazy about this too? I've only ever been to like one or one or two weddings in my life. Maybe yeah, I think only one, bro. Ah, low key, I'm glad. I don't know. I don't know. Show no interest in romance throughout their life, and often die tragically before reaching the age of 18. Finally, and most horrifying of all, are funerals or black level events. While blue and white level events can potentially be disrupted before they are completed, lessening or preventing the horrific results, there is as yet no way to stop or prevent a black level event at any stage. Any attempts to prevent Cousin Johnny from entering the church or funeral home will lead him to simply manifesting inside. Once in the room where the funeral is taking place, Cousin Johnny will first take up the role of eulogizer and begin speaking his standard nonsense to the attendants. The person who was emotionally closest to the departed will then open the casket, if this was not already an open casket funeral, and will then produce a large knife. It's unknown where the knives come from, as they're not present before the event and they disappear after. The funeral attendees will then use the knife on their wrists and sometimes throw oh! draining their blood into the coffin. Many lose more than enough blood to result in death, but none ever die from this, nor do they seem to feel any pain from their wounds. As the attendees take turns bleeding into the coffin, Cousin Johnny continues his eulogy which eventually evolves into a cicada song, the kind sung by Linnae's cicada males. The attendants sing the same song back to him in a kind of call and response. Cousin Johnny will then approach the coffin and vomit in a mixture of blood, wood pulp, and dead cicadas. Uh... The funeral will then proceed as normal, and the blood, vomit, and cicada-filled casket is then taken to the cemetery and buried. Black level events will usually end with the body being interred in the ground, but if there's a wake after the funeral, the horrors of the black level event will continue. At the wake, Cousin Johnny will climb on top of a table, lie down and encourage the other attendants to devour him, which they do. All the while he continues to Haven talk- donated bits, I am in. Facts, appreciate it, Billy. Fuck his nonsense, until there is nothing left. Much like blue and white level events, being in attendance leads to horrific after effects. All participants who experience this event will separate. There are definitely more details. I don't know if they're going to explain it, but there's definitely more details for the black level event because we had watched the SCP. Uh, uh, we watched the Vulgan version of it, I'm pretty sure. Break from their family through either suicide, moving, or divorce. Every individual present at the event will also find that they are no longer able to produce offspring. And couples' presence may also fall victim to incidences of domestic violence, often involving cannibalism, that usually leave one or both participants dead. While six out of ten children involved will attempt to murder one or both of their parents before they turn 18. These black level events are so horrible for all involved that any members of the specialized Cousin Johnny mobile task forces that happen to witness such an event are treated with Class A amnestics before they are transferred to another task force or retire, to ensure that they don't have to live with the memories of what they saw. Prior to that, they are closely monitored for any strange or antisocial behavior to make sure they weren't affected by the event. And they aren't the only SCP Foundation staff at risk of having been impacted by Cousin Johnny. It is theorized that as many as a third of Catholic and Anglican D-Class personnel were involved in the Black Level event at some point, and were driven to madness and violence by their fateful brushes with the strange relative that no one knows. So next time you're at a baptism, or a wedding, or a funeral, Stay vigilant, keep an eye on the other guests, and always ask yourself, do you really have a Cousin Johnny? But since you're here, go check out SCP-3001 Red Reality and SCP-4205. That was crazy. That was absolutely mad. That was a good video too, bro. Bro, holy crap, man. What in the world? Shout out SCP Infographics, bro.
It was a W. It was just strange, bro. Man. 